I am the director of a school here in Tbilisi. Uh, students, parents, uh, teachers sometimes, they keep me quite busy. In my free time to relax, I practice and I teach actually a form of Japanese fencing that is called kendo. That is actually kendo in the photo that you can see. At the bottom of the photo, you can see also a word in Japanese, sutemi. So today I wanted to talk about uh, what the word means in the context of kendo, but also what this word has meant for me in my life in many ways, and also perhaps even the connection that that has with me now living and working in Georgia. I came to Georgia via Boston, United States, but uh, I'm not from United States originally. Originally, I am from South Spain, a place called Andalusia. I was born in Sevilla, and I grew up in Cordoba. It's a very ancient, beautiful city that I left behind about 25 years ago. When I was there, when I was young, probably like it happened to you sometimes, I had these people around me, parents, family, friends, that they used to say these kind of things that probably you have heard before. They look at you in your teen years or in your early 20s and they say to you, enjoy, these are the best years of your life. Or even you have this uh, even more annoying uncle that he says to you with almost, almost pity, enjoy, these are the best years of your life, after this is all down the hill. Well, I have an uncle like that, I have some friends like that, and it terrified me every time that they said things like that because I was not very happy when I was a young person. So for me to think that that was as good as it could get and that from there everything was going to go down the hill, it was a terrifying prospect. Fortunately, these, uh, let's call it prophets of my youth, they were not correct. And actually every stage of my life has been better uh, more interesting, more fulfilling than the one before. I wish that I could tell you that this has been due to some kind of a plan that I have or some doctrine that I'm following, but uh, I really got nothing. I never believed or was very aware of any kind of a social or philosophical or even religious system that it was guiding my steps in life. I really have no plan whatsoever. In my work, I am very different. In my work, I always have a plan. I'm one of these detail-oriented person who follows through, makes plans, try to do things step by step. And I always try to improve the organization for which I work doing that. I also try to instill that on my students, to plan, to go step by step. But in my real life, I mean, my life out of my work, I'm not like that at all. My decisions, important decisions that I have made in my life, I made them very often without knowing why. Raising eyebrows in my family, my friends, that always say that you are going to do what? That you're going to move where? It's always this thing that I had to say, well, I don't know exactly, but I must do that. It's only later in life, when year goes by, that I read something, that I see something, that I learn a concept, and then I realize, oh, that was it. That was why I did that. But it happens later on. One of these occasions was when I learned about Sutemi. I started kendo, this form of Japanese fencing, when I was in my early 40s. It was very old to start. It was very hard. My wife at that time was uh, herself Japanese, and she couldn't understand why I would put myself through this amount of pain uh, to learn this. But the same, I just said, well, because I love this. Over time, I got a little bit more proficient, and in one of my trips to Japan, I went to this place in Osaka. This is the Kendo Hall of the Osaka Castle in this uh, capital of Japan. Every night, people go there, the highest level master of Kendo of Japan, 
they go there to this place and they just get in a line. You get in the line and you, in your turn, you fight them and they teach you while they fight you. This gentleman that you see there in the picture, because that's me attacking this gentleman, and you see so easily blocking my attack, he was 80 years old at that time. Yes, 80, 80 years old. And most of the guys that you see in the picture, they were from the mid-60s to mid-70s. And you still could not touch these people. In every single encounter, when you thought that you got them, they will get you. They will hit you. They will just do anything to you, and you will not know how they could do that. It really looked like magic. But these people told me about this concept, sutemi. Sutemi means literally commitment. That is to say, the commitment to a single action. So when you're ready to do something, just go and do it. Sutemi. But it's much more than commitment. The way that it's explained to me, it was not just full commitment, it was complete abandonment of yourself. That is, to cancel reason at the moment, to forget about any kind of rational thinking and just go and do it. For me, that was kind of a magical thing to do. And it was a little bit strange that they would put so much emphasis on this. Actually, they put a lot of emphasis on this. In the next photo, you can see me while I was fighting this gentleman. It looks like this old guy is helping me to stand up, but it's actually not that. He's actually keeping me down. He has throwing me to the floor, and now he is kicking me with his knee while he's laughing and yelling at me. I didn't know what he wanted. He was just driving me insane. And what he wanted me is for me to stand up and keep attacking to him without any regard for my safety. I kept attacking, attacking, attacking until I couldn't move myself, until I was about to pass out, literally. I was uh, almost throwing up. I, was, uh, I thought that I would faint. And when he saw, when he noticed that I would be fainting, then he stopped, opened his arms, hugged me, and he started laughing. All this was kind of confusing to me, but what he was telling me, that's the way. Stop thinking. Just go for it. Abandon yourself. For me, this is, was a little bit strange because I have worked with Japanese very often. As I said, my own wife at that time was Japanese, and I don't see Japanese people like being very irrational at all. They are, in fact, very detail-oriented. They are perfectionists. They are exquisite in all the details that go somewhere. So I asked them why would they put so much emphasis in this sutemi, and then they told me, but of course you cannot be abandoning yourself all the time. Everything needs to be based in this other concept, ri-ai. So ri-ai for them is the rational part. And that's what they do from the time that they are like this. They just train yourself methodically, step by step, repeating over and over the same movements until it's completely natural for them how they place their feet, until it's completely natural how they wrap around the fingers around the sword. Absolutely methodically. Absolutely rationality, but they still insist when is the moment of execute, when is the moment of throwing yourself to that attack, abandon reason. There was an interesting concept, a beautiful one if you think about this succession of uh, absolutely methodical rational steps to culminate in this explosion of abandoning of yourself. It made me think about uh, this kind of a uh, apparently irrational decisions that I made in my life. And it made me think that probably coming to Georgia was one of those. In the mid-90s, I was working in Boston. I had moved there from Spain in one of these strange decisions that I do. I taught myself English. I didn't know any English when I was there. I started working in a school in one of the schools that we started, I met this gentleman that later on will become my mentor and my friend called Don Thomas. He was an English teacher, very experienced English teacher. And he took me under his wing and we worked together for a long time. 
And one day he told me about this thing that had happened to him, that while he was in, a, in the other school that he was working, a gentleman of his own age show up and ask him, I am a businessman from a country called Georgia. Will you help me to create a school there? And my friend at that time didn't even know that there was a country called Georgia, but maybe he also believed in this Sudemi thing, and he said, why not? They, stopped, they started working about it, they went through a lot of work, and finally they decided that uh, they were ready and they started the school. The school was set up to open their, his door in September of 2001, and they invited me to come here to Georgia in the summer of 2001, to help them put together this network of computers that at that time was a novelty there. I spent here three, four weeks in a very hot summer. By the time that I left, I told my friend, I'm going to live in this place one day. My friend was kind of surprised because it was strange to him that I have enjoyed the experience. I wish that I could tell you that I fall in love with Georgia because I love the mountains or Tbilisi or because I, I fell in love with a beautiful Georgian woman, but nothing of that happened because the electricity was going off still very often and setting up those computers took every hour of my time. All that I did was to spend time in this place in a very small first floor that we called the cave because it was very hot and humid. And all that I did in all these weeks was to go from my apartment in a tiny street to this place and back from this place to Atene Street. I did, didn't do anything else. But in the breaks uh, for this, uh, you know, cut off electricity, I would go out, they would be there, I would see this little church and once in a while I would hear this singing. To the right of the school there was this uh, refugee camp and sometimes they took pity on me and they bring me something to eat. They were very concerned about me because I was working there all the time. And for some reason in these breaks that I took there to get any smoke or something, sometimes I felt like a something coming out of the floor, the ground. There was kind of a grab in me. It was a very strange feeling. I left. I stayed in touch with my friend. I kept listening to the news, you know, thinking about Georgia. But I went on. I did my life, and I kept working in these schools in Boston. And I sort of forgot about this project but I always, always was there in the back of my mind. Fast forward a bunch of years, and two years and a half ago, you will find me in a bed hospital in some place in Massachusetts. In a month or so, almost everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Uh, somebody, somebody hit me on the road. Uh, they had to do surgery. I got an infection. So I was there lying that night with a priest, literally with a priest. Well, it's America, it was a priest test, but uh, same, same result. And I survived, obviously, because I'm here. <laughs> and, but I remember spending many days at the hospital thinking, I really think that I need to do something different. And by the time that I left the hospital, I decided to resign from my position and keep living for a while and see what uh, life will bring. The first thing that I wanted to do was to visit friends around the world, to go to Japan again, to go to London, see Spain, my parents. But then the first thing that I remember is, I would like to visit these guys in Georgia. So I called my friend, I told him what happened, and he said, well, yeah, sure, come and visit us. But you know that we are looking for a position as the director of the school, why don't you apply? And it was not over, overconfidence or anything, but the moment that my friend said, why don't you apply for the position, I knew that I would get the job and I would end up here because it was written somehow. So here I am, a year had passed, and of course, I was kind of concerned that uh, this would be sort of a fantasy, that I would be lying in this bed with a fever and I was remembering somehow Georgia, but uh, reality will crumble my dreams. It hasn't been like that at all. It has been actually more than I expected. I feel here absolutely energized. I feel happy like I've never been. 
I feel so inspired that I don't know what to do with myself. And I keep working in this school. The school has changed a lot now. The school is very modern and fancy, but the same result. I wait there at the door every morning when my students are coming. And for some reason that I don't understand very well, I felt this surge of absolute happiness of seeing them coming to school. Or if I have a very hard day, I just go there to my little place that I have in Vera, and I see this weird landscape or skyline that you have in Tbilisi, and I feel like, a, well, this is the place where I'm supposed to be. And I don't know why still. It has been more than a year, and I cannot give you a reason for that. But I don't bother thinking too much about reasons now. If I meant to know exactly why I did what I did, why am I doing, what am I doing here, I will know when is the time to know. In the meantime, I'm working and I'm creating a kendo club. These are my Georgian students. We meet every, every Sunday and I teach them kendo and I teach them sutemi too. I have this friend. She's still there in Spain. Uh, for the sake of this public speaking, let's change her name to Julia. And Julia is very funny and she always makes me laugh. She's all the time writing to me, asking me about this what she considered adventures. And she always say, man, your life is like magic, like magic. And I always said to her, well, magic is just something that we haven't understood yet. The moment that we understand it, whenever we understand it, we realize that it was all done by us, by decisions that we were not aware when we made them, by actions that have been forgotten. And the waves of these actions, they put something in motion that at the end, it reaches back at some point. And for lack of a better word, we call that magic. Only that uh, now I have a better word because I feel like uh, this word magic is kind of passive. It's magic is like a something that happened to us. But when we make something happen, whether we are conscious or not, for that, I call it abandonment, sutemi. Thank you. <laughs>